Hi guys! So it's the 12 days of Christmas series and you can see it is snowing. Hello friends, welcome to my channel. My name is Wolo. I want to say thank you to everyone who have subscribed to my channel. It's 10 days to Christmas and yeah, the year is already running out and I am so grateful for how this year has been so far. I also want to say thank you to everyone who have subscribed to my channel and have seen my videos and I will request for those who have not subscribed to so please click on the subscribe button and the notification bell anytime I upload videos you will be the first to know I love to share information useful information about life in Canada immigrating to Canada for anybody who wants to come to Canada and is kind of stuck on what kind of information he or she needs about Canada this channel is all about information concerning Canada and today I'll be talking about driving in Canada and getting a car in Canada because driving is very necessary. It's not a luxury, but it is necessary if you have a car. It's, it's, it's very necessary because of the winter periods, which is very cold and brutal. Now, for new immigrants to Canada, um, you can drive your car with your old or your home country driver's license or an international driver's permit for three months and you are allowed to drive for three months within that three months you should be able to pass the knowledge test and also pass the road test so that you can get a Canadian driver's license so after three months you cannot continue to drive with an international driver's permit you cannot continue to drive with your home country driver's license so you only have three months to be able to get um, the Canadian driver's license and of course Getting the Canadian driver's license during winter is a tough one. So for people coming to Canada during winter and um, planning to get a car, you will not be able to drive that car after three months if you're not able to get your driver's license. So that's one information there. And then the licensing classification is different from province to province. So uh, Manitoba and the other provinces like Alberta, Saskatchewan, British Columbia, Newfoundland, Labrador, New Brunswick, um, Nova Scotia, the licensing for a, an SUV and a normal vehicle, the, the licensing is called a class 5 driver's license. Whereas for Ontario, Ontario is the only province that calls it a G-class driver's license. That is if you buy an SUV or a normal car. But if you want to drive a truck in Canada, you will need a class 1 driver's license with air brake or a class 3 driver's license depending on the kind of truck. And truck drivers actually earn very well in Canada. They earn as much as 80,000 Canadian dollars, 100,000 Canadian dollars, depending on the company they drive for or if they do um, um, self ownership, or, you know, kind of arrangements with transport companies to deliver goods and stuff like that. So if you want to get a class one driver's license for Manitoba, you might be paying as much as $10,000 to learn how to drive a truck and get the class one driver's license whereas uh, it's quite different from province to province for the one i know for manitoba is you have to be paying as much as eight thousand dollars or ten thousand canadian dollars to go to school um learn how to drive a truck get the air brake license and also get the class one driver's license and funny enough most people some some immigrants that's actually what they do once they they've come to canada they see that the struggle is much and the easiest thing to do is to start driving they either drive a cab or drive for uber or drive a truck so these are kind of easy jobs that they can easily get but for the truck you pay more money to actually you know learn how to drive the truck and get um, get a class one driver's license and in addition to that um, when you're driving in canada you have to be very careful because um, there are cameras everywhere that is watching your speed limit. You have to obey the rules and obey the signs, obey the speed limit. Because if you go above the speed limit and the camera captures your vehicle, 
you will get a speeding ticket and speeding tickets are quite expensive um you can be paying as much as 150 dollars 200 dollars for a speeding ticket and you have to go to court to defend yourself in front of a judge and then before you now start um, you talk about your payment plan if you want to pay it gradually or you just want to pay it at once and you just have to be very careful some people get speeding ticket that is as much as six hundred dollars one thousand canadian dollars so you have to be careful when you're driving and apart from watching the cameras or watching out for the cameras you should also watch out for roc mp officers who are hiding by street corners that's one, one thing people uh, do not know they are not aware of that sometimes roc mp officers hide by street corners to capture vehicles that are going above speed limit so if you are the type of person that you just see oh okay there is no camera in front let me just you know give 100 when you're on a 60 speed when you play when the road is supposed to be a 60 you will not know that there is one rcmp officer in one corner who is watching your vehicle go above the speed limit and before you know what's happening you have a speeding ticket in your mailbox you'll be wondering how did you get that speeding ticket that's because um, one rcmp officer was by the corner and was able to capture your vehicle that was going above speed limit then if you're driving in school zones school zone speed limit is about 30 I, that's for manitoba i don't know for other provinces but for manitoba the school zone is 30 you can't go above school above 30 when you're driving in a school zone for rural areas the speed limit is 50 you can't go above 50 when you're driving in rural areas for highway you can drive as much as 100 120 but you also have to be careful because RCMP officers are also hiding in one corner or the other on the highway and they can just capture your vehicle and you get a speeding ticket so you don't want to come to canada and start spending money on speeding ticket and guess what it happened to my husband once he, he got a speeding ticket and he went to defend himself in court and paid 150 dollar fine for a speeding ticket anyway so that's by the way then um talking about cars getting a car in canada for new immigrants you start thinking oh okay how do i get a car do i buy a new car which if you're buying a new car is very expensive what people do is they finance it and if you have the money you have the job you can go ahead and buy or finance it if you want to buy a second hand car there are dealerships everywhere where you can get second hand cars or um you can buy from kijiji as well but if you're buying from kijiji you have to be very careful and request for what is called safety receipts so if you're buying from kijiji from a an owner that has used the car before you just have to ask the owner if the car has been safety safety means if a mechanic has worked on it recently they've changed the oils there are no problems the brake is working fine the the, the everything about the car is generally okay that's the safety reports about the car so if you have a safety you can also ask a mechanic to also help you check the car to know if the car is okay before you actually pay for the car and um, that's when you're buying a car from kijiji if you don't want to buy a car from kijiji the third option is to buy through auction and through auction um those cars are cars that are accidented cars and are salvageable some of them just have minor issues here and there while some have major issues and during winter is when uh, a lot of people have lots of accidents on canadian roads canadian highways because the roads are slippery the roads are icy and uh, there's what's called black ice black ice you are not seeing the ice because it's black looking like the road and you will not know that the road is slippery so um this period a lot of people have accidents and they just take the cars for auctioning so those cars you can actually buy them for manitoba you will have to go to the auction place and bid for the car you want you will see the vehicles you can go to the website i'll be leaving the link um the, the, on the description box of this video where you can see vehicles that are up for auction twice a month thereabouts they do auction vehicles in manitoba and you just go to the place where the auction pay a fee a certain fee um going to the auction place and bid for the car you want you can actually go around the vehicles see the vehicles physically and bid for it if you're the highest bidder you get the car and you take the car out to repair of course you know that repairing a car a damaged car in canada is very expensive so you have to think very well sometimes you can be lucky to get a good car 
on auction but sometimes you might not be lucky you have to pay so much money to repair a car auction cars are cheaper to buy they are much much cheaper to buy compared to other cars for saskatchewan auction cars are displayed online i'll be leaving the link you just go look at the vehicle and for Saskatchewan, the good thing about saskatchewan auction is that they actually um, give you a list of the things that have been damaged in the car so you have an idea of what is damaged and you have an idea of what it will cost you to fix the damaged car so um it's easy you just go online bid and if you are successful they will send you an email that you have won the car and then you give you a time frame to come and pick the car from wherever the car is located so that's for auctioned cars and even quebec as well i know quebec also has um, one where people bid for and it's quite cheaper quebec saskatchewan manitoba ontario i think all the pro almost all the provinces have um provision for bidding for cars that are salvageable yes salvageable cars so that's a, that's it about cars but you can also go to a website called autotrader.ca if you want to buy used cars there are several websites where you can buy used cars from and um, depending on your budget depending on your pocket you can you know just buy the one that is suitable for you so that's the information i want to share today and this is um yeah it's we are getting towards the end of the year and i hope that i have shared a useful information for anybody planning to come to canada thank you so much for watching and see you in my next video bye bye